Hello everyone. My name is Mohamed Mudai, PhD student at the Universidad Carlos III de Madrid. And my name is Fernando Diaz Muñoz, a research engineer at INDEA and a student at the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. And we are here to co-present our paper title on the experiment assessment of quick and congestion control schemes in solar networks. First, about the motivations and objectives of this paper. The first objective was to compare pure quick with pure PCP. Since Quick has been around for not that long, this will help understand this new emerging protocol, which is Quick. Then from the transport layer, of course, then we moved into comparing, comparing it in the application layer. So we are comparing HTTP3, of course, over Quick with HTTP1 and HTTP2. We execute these experiments in real operational environment with the help of Monroe. Thus, we collect statistics such as download time, delay, total throughput, also round trip time, and uh, bison flight. And the best part is it's all open source. The data set is freely available on Zenodo and the code is really available on GitHub. We also inspect different congestion control algorithms such as Copa, Cubic, Neural Reno, and DBR. So, our approach is develop a methodology around an outside-in approach to protocol understanding, which means that we have the implementation and we would like to understand the protocol itself from within the implementation, as well as generate a public repository of network experiments. So we are collecting data sets and we are putting them freely for people to use and researchers, of course. We center on several quick implementations we use the MovePass implementation as well as the PlowSim implementation, leveraging on user read data from operational commercial mobile networks with the help of Monroe. So maybe we need to talk a little bit more about Monroe. So next, let's talk a little bit more about Monroe. The Monroe platform. The Monroe platform is basically an experiment as a service. It was designed for that to conduct experiments on real mobile networks. It was funded by the European Commission and now it's, ba it's based on an alliance that we call the Mono Alliance. Of course, it's large scale and has a wide geographical coverage. We cover Spain, Italy, Norway, and Sweden with 246 nodes deployed in universities and uh, labs in a form of static nodes and also in mobility in buses, trucks, and trains. It's multi-homed and uh, supports multiple connectivity. We have cellular connectivity as well as Ethernet and Wi-Fi. As we can see here, these are the nodes and they are flexible and powerful nodes. They, their operating system is uh, Linux and we have a tail and a hat. So basically a tail has one LTE modem and one Wi-Fi card as well as supports Ethernet connection. On the other hand, the head tail has two LTE modems and Ethernet and supports two SIM cards. So what is Quick? Let's have a, an introduction to Quick in a nutshell. So Quick was basically developed by Google in the year 2014. It's been around for seven years. The naming comes from Quick UDP Internet Connection. Thus, it's based on UDP. The aim was to solve TCP problem. First, by using a zero and one RTT. So basically the, the, the first connection between the client and server takes one RTT since the encryption is within the protocol. Once this is uh, established and cached in the server, it will take only zero RTT to establish the connection. Next, one of the problems encountered in TCP is the whole, whole problem. With stream multiplexing, Quick was able to solve this problem. Also, the next generation of HTTP3 is based on Quick. And next, we're going to talk about the login Quick. Some protocols like TCP can rely on pickup files, uh, which simply capture IP packets to reconstruct TCP flows through protocol headers. However, debugging a protocol such as, as complex as Quick, which doesn't have, is not legacy protocol and also has native encryption, is it's impossible through pickup cases. Thus, a specific Q-login format, a uh, specific format, sorry, uh, called Q-log, has been developed to organize and record different uh, information capturing through an exchange with an exchange very quick. Uh, the log is conferred a certain degree of flexibility. However, some kilo fields are reserved and redefined. For example, each event record must include a timestamp, which indicates the time in which the event was recorded. Also a field describing the type of event. And finally, the data requested. Events can be grouped in categories also to that, although it's optional, to allow some high-level filtering. 
finally, uh, some uh, visualization is allowed through QBIS uh, graphical tool, which allows to import uh, login files and display not only uh, the package exchange, which is what you can visualize in this image, but also aggregated statistics. Then uh, let's talk about the methodology, which we have devised to incrementally gather information about the protocol. The methodology follows an outside-in approach, and as so, we will first center on external information that can be extracted from the experiment. Experiments are defined in the form of Docker containers, uh, which embed closing and move fast implementations. They run on Monroe nodes, which are capable of accessing the internet through operational commercial mobile broadband, mobile broadband networks. Our Docker containers come with a queued TCP uh, request file download that is done to a server that is located in our lab that runs also as a quick and TCP uh, tra traffic generator. In this first part, the closing of the instance offers the possibility to mimic HTTP, which we will use to reproduce the behavior of web page retrieval. Although the download time and throughput, which are captured in this scenario, are useful to give an overview of the performance of the experiment, it does not explain the reason behind the results gathered due to the complexity of the protocols studied. Thus, we go to a second step in which we use QLog to generate our loaded statistics. Uh, first, we in this first scenario, the first setup, the client requests 100 kilobytes to 1 megabyte uh, per download bursts with close sim implementation to test web downloads. On the other hand, we set a fixed time of interval of 15 seconds for experiment with MoveFast to emulate a streaming cases. In the experiment with MoveFast, we also configure the download of the data several times using a different, different congestion algorithm every time and also switching between single and multiple downloads in parallel. This is possible since the selected tools uh, allow us to run multiple instances of uh, quick uh, in the same server. The execution of parallel downloads also helps us evaluate uh, the fairness of congestion control algorithms and how they behave uh, in a scenario where sources must be shared. The exciting part, the results. So let's start first slowly with the comparison of quick and TCP, pure quick and pure TCP and go from there. So this is uh, an experiment done on static nodes that are deployed in labs of a one megabyte download, file download. And here we collect or we observe the download time of, of each of these uh, file downloads in Spain, Sweden, and Norway. Let's take a look at Spain, the Spain case. Here we can see that quick outperforms TCP clearly through the ECDF. However, in the case of Sweden, it's a toss up. The TCP outperforms quick by a margin. However, uh, quick shows less download time, at, uh, which in saturates at 80, almost 80 milliseconds. And in Norway, it's also not clear, which means that there is no clear winner. It's a toss up between sometimes quick outperforming TCP and sometimes TCP outperforming quick in stable connection, which is static node with similar network we are talking. So let's take a look at how quick and TCP behave in mobile network. So this is the case of a mobile node, the same thing, one megabyte download. And we have here the distribution of the ECDF of the download time between quick and TCP. We can see here there is no really not that big of a difference between quick and TCP. But however, quick tends to saturate at uh, 20,000 milliseconds, uh, better than TCP around 4,000, which is the double, let's say. But if we look at the number of samples in the time series, we can see that TCP shows high peaks and instead quick shows more of a stable trend in terms of download time. Then let's compare quick, the reason behind quick, which is the uh, HTTP 3, let's compare it on the application layer. So in this case, we have the static nodes in Spain and the mobile nodes in Sweden with a uh, 100 kilobyte, kilobyte download file, mimicking some kind of a page. As you can see here, in all cases, rather static or mobile, HTTP3 outperformed the HTTPS and HTTPT in all cases. And this was really clear in this case, but still we needed to understand more statistics about, about Quick and HTTP3. Thus, we needed to look at the Q logs. So we can see here a first glance at Q log which with one kilobyte download in a more in a screen uh, in Sweden, in a mobile node, in a bus running around Sweden. 
we can see that the throughput and bison flight are typically very stable and they show normal trends as well as the smooth RTT. Maybe you can see here a peak, but that's just, you know, sometimes it happens due to the connection of the bus moving around in urban areas. But this was not enough actually to understand how, how quick works. So we went through how the congestion control algorithms, how the how changing congestion control algorithms affects this. So these following figures are going to report the results of a download stream performed sequentially in parallel and using the information gathered from few logs. As you can see, we report the results for two, oh sorry, for four condition control algorithms, DBR, COPA, cubic, and urine. As you can see in this first scenario, this smooth RTT is different for across different condition control algorithms. This is mainly due to the fact that the experiments were executed sequentially in a static Spanish node, in a, a static Spanish node and thus the curves for condition for RTT are different as they represent different moments in time. Uh, as you can see also in the throughput figure, um, cubic is the condition control algorithm that yields more stable, uh, highest throughput uh, in an average because it's the one that is able to sustain a high throughput across time. However, it is in Reno, the one that achieves the highest peak rates, as it can be seen in the image. On the other hand, BBR seems to, seem, seems to be the congestion control scheme that is able to adapt better and faster to standard variations, as the congestion con uh, control window is maintained uh, high uh, across the experiment. Meanwhile, the new Reno and Cubic suffer from greedy approaches at the beginning of the experiment. COPA is a condition control scheme that yields the worst results, both in throughput and also in the congestion window. Uh, well, regarding the execution of a parallel experiment, we can see that uh, the nature of this experiment is parallel in the figure represented by the smooth RTT, as in all the experiments have the same RTT or a similar RTT curve. Uh, as it can be seen in this particular case, BPR is more stable and also that quicks to, quicker to network conditions over time. Um, in contrast to all classical operation schemes such as new Reno and Cubic, uh, new um, uh, BBR is able to keep a high window or achieve the maximum condition window size after a change in the network conditions. That is, in a particular case, when the network must or the network resources must be shared. In this case, among the four condition control algorithms. Also, as it can be seen at the end of the experiment. It is the one that it's sustaining the highest value for throughput and also for bison flight. Finally, so that uh, we can compare uh, condition control scheme characteristics or performance in a, a mobile scenario where conditions are harsh. Are harsher than in a static scenario, we can see that in the smooth RTT part, uh, BBR is the one that is suffering from worse network conditions. However, is the one that obviously yields better results, both in the throughput, as it can be seen in the top left image, and in bytes in flight. Also, as you can see, these values for throughput and bytes in flight seem to be very stable on time, all in the expenses of maintaining up pretty oscillating or uh, an oscillating graph for the congestion window value. Conclusions. Quick outperformed TCB in terms of application layer, but this is not true in terms of the transport layer as we have seen through the results. We believe that the experiment design directly influences overall performance and Fernando can explain why. Yes, for example, as we, as we have seen, uh, the, ele the election of choosing different condition control algorithms helps us to evaluate uh, better their performance and also how they impact in the in our case on the transport protocol we're evaluating, which is quick. Also, the selection of uh, sequential and parallel experiments allows us to evaluate better the behavior of this protocol using different uh, network or different conditions in their scenarios. As we have seen, BBR is the congestion control algorithm that yields the most stable results, and thus it is the one that seems to be most appropriate for the for Quake. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and hopefully by the 16th of June we'll be able to go 
answer any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.